Hello and welcome back to Softcore History. I'm your host for this week, Jake Goldman. I'm joined, as always, by my two co-hosts, Dan Register and Rob Fox. Lovely to be here today, boys. Thanks for having me on your show, guys. Oh, man. You know, when I introduce him, he does that. When it's I always don't, a pleasure. Yeah. When I don't introduce him, it's, you never introduced me. So that's the inside baseball you'll get so far today. But before we talk any more about our amazing history podcast, I do want to do one thing of housekeeping real quick. Just one. We have a Patreon. You we check do. It out. It's patreon.com slash softcore history. Please, if you enjoy this content for $5 a month, you get two additional episodes a week. That's eight episodes a month. Sometimes Plus, more. Jake, everything is evergreen. Everything's evergreen. Hours. So, two years of content. <laughs> two years of extra content for five bucks a month. You got a long drive coming up. I know I do. I'm about to go to Florida. I, it's the perfect time to jump in. Got hours and hours of time to kill? Listen to us. Just guys being dudes talking history. Talking about dudes being guys well, back in the someone day. someone said great banner, recent review, great banner, mediocre history. Perfect. That's, yeah. That's that might on. be our tagline from here on out. Oh, I'm, I'm into Are you going to meet, Aren't you going to meet babies in Florida? Yeah. Going to meet uh, nieces. You going to feed any babies? You going to hold them? I will hold babies. Let them suckle at a bottle? I don't know. I or mean, how close is how close is your family? Are you allowed to hold the baby? Are you going to hold the baby while it breastfeeds? I, I it's not like you cradle it. I'm not. It's actually going to suck on Jake's teat. There's multiple babies I'm seeing, so I'm seeing a lot of babies. Well, get ready. I'm a new uncle, so got to see them babies. Your nips aren't going to be fresh anymore. Mm. Just toss them a protein bar, <laughs> muscle milk, yeah, mm-hmm. with a with a nipple on it. If I breastfed from you right now, Dan, would it just muscle milk come out? Depends. Have you been lifting? No, it depends on you. Oh, like it? Your your teat knows what I need. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it's very prov- like caring. I guess uh, that's very providing. So it's an intuitive. It's got to be in that yeah. like hour anabolic window yeah, too. It's like if I suck on Dan's teat more than an hour after I lift weights, it just shoots out water. It's like mm-hmm. hydrate, you idiot. Otherwise, it's muscle. Here's milk. some electrolytes. <laughs> it's Pedialyte or muscle milk, <laughs> one or the other. But uh. You know, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about something that no one's talking about right now. The Roman Empire. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's a little late on that meme, my guy. <laughs> yeah. But not any part of the Roman Empire in particular that's good or like, whoa, look at the Roman Empire, go. It's just a general overview of the Roman Empire. So we're going to start from <laughs> year one. The history of Rome. No, we're not doing that. Oh. We're talking about, this is a little bit more of a complex thing we've talked about before. That's um, crazy. We have a... Uh, Two episodes, really, about Italy this week. One we kind of accidentally do that all the fucking time. There's a lot though. of through lines with the yeah. We never yeah. plan it either because we don't talk to each other. Nor There's should no we. There's no pre-show yeah, well, meeting. Well, we don't want to outside of this. No, we no, hate this each- we're like Oasis. We fucking hate each other. Purely for pay. I personally sabotage Rob every chance I get and speak poorly about him in the press. Is that, that why the do. cookies you made were such dog shit? Those cookies were fucking great. Oh, I thought you sabotaged their taste to fuck with me. Yeah. yeah. You didn't like them? For real? You didn't like those cookies? What was wrong with them? Just kidding. Oh, okay. Spits over. Oh. Yeah, no, it was good, No, the right? cookies were delicious. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, Jake came in them. They were made with love. <laughs> well, that's yeah. what I would hope. Is he got gotcha. you. The secret ingredient gotcha good. was actually when they were cooling, I emerald agassi them with a... Uh, you salt bait? I salt bait them? I salt bait them. Yeah. yeah. I hit them with some salt. I could taste I, the salt. Or yeah. was that just the jizz? Well, yes. Yeah. That was the protein. Yeah. What did you eat before? What did I eat before? Mm-hmm. I made the cookies? No, for the cum. Oh, pineapple. Classic. Just a lot of pineapple and papaya. Classic. Yeah. A lot of pineapple and papaya. Good for your tummy. Yeah. And jalapeno. I mean, I regret yeah. giving them to my toddler. Yeah, that's, that's on you. Feels like it's on you. <laughs> they were for your birthday. <laughs> so they weren't for- Yeah, why are you sharing your birthday cookies? Yeah, why would you do that? I don't know. Hey. I don't know. <laughs> well, you think you're like too good for us being so selfless? <laughs> we, uh, we talk about- this in particular subject like offhand a lot um and i've had a couple people ask me like where did like the feudal monarchy come from yeah and i was like fuck it we're tackling that today so today we're gonna embark oh that's fun oh by the way real quick speaking of the roman empire oh of course right before we got on this i saw a headline on my instagram that was like uh fuck it's ridiculous it was something along the lines of like um hate lgbt group declares Hadrian's wall a gay icon or something like that <laughs> what uh, yeah why i don't know there was a lot of there's a lot of dicks drawn on it 
Fair enough. By Roman soldiers. I mean, I don't know that that I mean, if that's the case, then I have several notebooks from high school that are <laughs> iconic. Gay Any symbols. bathroom stall. Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, you might be onto something. A lot right? of a lot of uh, medieval monk books too. Cock. Yeah. Everywhere. Cock snails, like yeah. snail cocks. Dicks that have a shell that knights ride. We've always wanted to draw dicks. Um, it's it's definitely. One of the Taylor's oldest. They're fun time. and easy to draw. They are easy to draw. It's a lot easier to draw a penis than anything. It's like else. that one S everyone drew in middle school. That's been around for a while. No one knows the true origin of that. What either. is the name of it? I forget. The cool S. I don't know. I've heard. But I hope like the next like horrifying genocidal fascist empire appropriates that S for their flag. <laughs> so it becomes essentially the swastika. Uh, yeah, the same way the swastika. <laughs> it was like a totally benign symbol. It's a Nazi symbol for like, like peace. Sweet. Yeah. Um, last time I was in New Orleans, I went to a bar, and the flooring was all from like the er- early 1800s or yeah, yeah. late 1800s, whatever. And it was full of swastikas. Pre-Nazi swastikas. Yep. So yeah, it's hard to like. The, the harder thing for that would be like you know for the swastika people would be like, well you know it's part of this like Indian uh, culture thing, Hindu. and like with the cool ass would be like middle schoolers drew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like there would be no like what was this before? It's like oh well. Uh, we don't know. It was the show that you were dope. Yeah. People would always fuck it up and make it a square on accident. It's like you couldn't do it. You're weak. Nerd. But uh, yeah, today we're embarking on a high-level comprehensive exploration of how the fall of the Western Roman Empire led to a more modern concepts of monarchy and royalty through feudalism. So this time period, I have a book on it that I really need to read, but I just never do. Why would but you? The time period, you the time period between the fall right around the fall of Western Rome, like a little bit before it and then through it up until the rise of Islam to me is like one of the most fascinating time periods in human history. I just stabbed Julius Caesar in Assassin's Creed Origins. Did you? I did. Last night. You too, brother? Was he a real boner? Was he like all like a little peacock? Did he cry about like, it? He was. He was kind of feeling himself. It yeah. was a heat check and then I just went in with a fucking knife. Nothing quite kills a heat check like a stab in the back. <laughs> oh, like you're going to win? People. Yeah. You're going to win? <laughs> nah, not today, bro. Stabby, stabby. I do love how they uh, kind of appropriate history and like throw you into it. Yeah, it's in fun. those games. It's just I, like, yeah, I'm gonna kill Caesar. It's a good gateway drug. <laughs> I want to get plugged into some like historical video games that Tarantino retcons history in. Like, I would love to play Inglorious Bastards. I don't think I'd ever stop playing that game. Just light up Hitler. Yeah, in just the movie theater before you burn it down. Inglorious Bastards. That's almost just Wolfenstein, really. It is kind of Wolfenstein. What was the Michael Bay movie where it was like? Nazi zombies or Nazi vampires? I don't think that was a Bay movie. What? It wasn't Bay. Scarscard was in it, I think. But yeah, I know what you're talking about. It was and and like Overmensch or like Bad Boys. Overlord. 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 It, it was Overlord because Operation Overlord is D Day. Yeah. Have you ever seen Overlord? Dan? I have not watched it. Transformers. Yes. Transformer Nazis. The Decepticons and the Nazis. Pearl movies. Harbor. Also, I look. I like the movie Pearl Harbor. I just like Ben Affleck. I like Michael Bay. He's yeah, a great I director. I don't. He gets I don't a lot care of shit. I don't he gets care. a lot of unnecessary shit. I also like. Did you ever hear his response when people called his movies like dumb and and uh, whatever? No. Is he, he like goes, I'm rich and hot? N- well, kind of. Basically, he goes, "I make." He literally this was, his quote was, "I make movies for 13 year old boys. Oh, what a crime!" <laughs> <laughs> no, I love people that know their fucking lane. Yeah, and are unapologetic. About yes. It. Yeah. I, I love that, and I love the comedian that accidentally tried to roast Zack Snyder. Have you seen that clip? Mm, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. he's just like... Um, he's doing crowd work. He's doing crowd work, and he's just like, oh, you're a director, huh? What, what have you made? And he's like, well, do you know any directors named Zack? And he's like, yeah, Zack Snyder. He's like, well, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> the guy must be like, well, shit. My day's over. <laughs> have a good one, Zack Snyder. Well, here's how you win that one. You go, uh, oh, hey, well, great to have you here. Did you bring your daughter? Ooh, I don't know the context of that. She's dead. Oh no! <laughs> like tragically, he, he, extremely tragically. Yeah, he was unaware he had a child. Well, he doesn't. Well, yeah, that's true. Who? Ex- uh, well, bad so review. So, if any comedians are doing crowd work and, and Zach Zack Snyder's Snyder in the crowd, peeks his fucking head into it again, ruins your night because <laughs> you can't get a good joke yeah. off. Yeah, why don't you ruin his life? <laughs> so, I want to cover how feudalism's origin and the shadows of the Roman Empire. And its adaptation through t- turmoil and post-Roman Empire in Europe uh, kind of influence how feudalism gets started. And we're going to kind of cross into like the height of influence under Charlemagne 
and it's enduring legacy in our mind. Why don't you world. stop talking about what you're going to talk about and talk about and it? Talk about what you're going to talk about. As I said, the you're story. <laughs> <laughs> you're that kid in high school who's like, you're not even ready for what I'm about to do. No, dude, you're not even ready. Like the things that are actually going on, they make me sick. Y- you wouldn't sleep at night if you knew the truth. You know, know what I mean? mean? <laughs> like if you only knew, if you half knew of it, what was running this world, <laughs> you would shit your pants and vomit out your eyeballs. I. uh a year ago when Rory was really sick and I had to like sleep with him at night to make sure he was sitting up because his, o- he, his oxygen would get too low. Um, it's fine. He lived. I'm not uh, Zack Snyder. Sure. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Sorry, Zack Snyder. Look, there's plenty of time. Uh, what if Zack's a fan of the show, too? <laughs> Zack Snyder's like, Snyder's well, like, well, on, time man. for a review. Catching L's everywhere. <laughs> God damn. I think Zack Snyder is uh, much like Michael Bay. Like, genuinely, I think he's criminally, like, People are too mean to him. Uh, it's the guy who just said what he said. Well, I meant about his work. Well, his work was like loved universally at first, and then people turned on him. The Dawn of the Dead remake is one Fantastic. of my favorite horror movies. One of the best remakes of all time. Uh, of anything, yeah. yeah. And then Watchmen is great. I don't care what anyone says. I, like I don't Watchmen care what too. little nerd boys said on the internet. Watchmen is a dope movie. 300 is um, dope, too. I don't care. And 300 is dope, too. Those are like, I don't, I don't care. It's not his fault DC sucks ass. He wasn't the only one that made a shitty DC movie. Every fucking person who made a DC movie made a shitty DC movie. But then movie. they hyped up the Snyder Cut, and it did not live up to it. I'm sure it didn't. I didn't even bother with it. I'm actually like an hour into the new, the the, the Batman, uh, the Pattinson one. I'm good on it that. It sucks. It's, I, so far, I'm like, all right, I'm waiting. But you ever just sit around me like, what's the point of this? Uh, I'm like an hour in, and I'm like, mm, so this better turn soon. Well, that's most of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dan. So, at, as I said, the story begins with the decline of the Western Roman Empire. The empire was stretched thin by vast territories and plagued by economic instability. You just blame it, illegal immigrants. It, well, it's not like, is it immigration if you're forcing them to be you? <laughs> if you're borging them? <laughs> like, yeah, when you're conquering? No, yeah. no, they weren't conquering. Actually, it's really funny. One of the problems in the late Roman Empire is that, so like, the Huns, and the Huns in particular was funny because, you know how, it's kind of the opposite of this, but you know how when there's a tsunami all the water retreats back yeah and it keeps going and, and so you're like there's a reaction before the the primary all the there's animals, an action before the primary all the yes. animals run off yeah. yeah so before the huns came in the roman empire was invaded immediately before that by people being like jesus christ <laughs> looking over their shoulder like oh fuck it's like they're coming it's like there's people freaking out, running. <laughs> yeah. It's like a World War Z kind of situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just and then Paul, the, and then Paul the, Revere on meth. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then the Huns came. <laughs> That's, what a nightmare. Um, yeah, but they could no longer maintain their grip on their far-flung provinces. Um, the third century in particular saw the empire weakened by internal strife, economic depression, and a series of invasions by Germanic tribes. Uh, this they're, period... They are getting invaded a lot. It was also interesting in late Rome, if I recall correctly, because... Um, they actually kind of switched up the, their military in general. Switched a lot, where um, instead of being basically the classic Roman army that you think of, um, became a lot more cavalry focused, mm. and they hired and they were using a lot more like auxilia and just basically foreign or like non-Roman. Like I don't know if citizens the right word, yeah, but like yeah. non-Roman, non-central Roman Empire kind of troops. Not like Less a lot of Germanic the troops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, uh, one of the periods that really kind of sets it off is the crisis of the third century. Uh, that s- sets the stage for a lot of the eventual downfall. And, um, you know, we could do a whole episode on the crisis of the third century, which is just tons of military conflict within the actual, you know, it's military anarchy. Um, what's new? Yeah. Right. It's really like the first s- second, no, the second century, the one hundreds. Yeah. Right. That was largely that was sort of the Pax Romana. I think Pax Romana started in the first century and it was like half first century, half second century. But that whole period, they were basically like, dude, this is sweet. We're like barely having civil wars. Yeah. It was dope. Yeah. But the rest of the Roman, I mean, most of the biggest Romans you know about are because of civil wars. Fucking Caesar, for one, yep. and Augustus and Mark Anthony, all in the same set of like eight civil wars in a row that they had. And then... If you want to go late empire, fucking Constantine, that was, he became emperor thanks to his, like, civil war. Like, they yeah. were always fucking having they civil wars. They were dipping their toes too much into other, just, like, empires. Yeah, so. That was really the issue. <laughs> it, 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 
Kind of. <laughs> like, why are you fucking around in Egypt? Stop spreading so thin. Well, they, they controlled Egypt. I mean, it's a miracle they were able to control the entire perimeter of the Mediterranean Sea at one point. But if they had really just built the wall kind of on the Persians and not kept trying to conquer whatever that Persian Empire was called in that iteration of it, like yeah. they spent, and the Byzantines did this too later, which is why Islam was able to roll over the Eastern Roman Empire and the Persians is because like they just constantly fought and bankrupted each other. And then there would be horrible consequences within their own empires. And then they'd regroup and then just have another fucking 80 years of war. And it was just rinse. It was yeah. And insane. over time that the base is your currency. Hmm, yeah. Causes economic collapse. And there was also the uh, plague of Cyprian or Cyprian. Cyprian. Cyprian uh, contributing to a lot of disorder. They had just like, Peasant uprisings yeah. and shit, so much shit going on. Was the plague of Cyprian uh, Black Death? I don't know actually, because they do think the plague. They they're now like pretty positive the plague of Justinian, which was a couple hundred years later, was actually the first instance of Black Death. Um, yeah. Uh, it. But Rob, what if I told you it was before? <laughs> what if I told you that Black Death was before? They think uh, the Cyprian thing could have been either smallpox measles or uh ebola virus ebola yeah they think it could have been ebola well oh, there's like we wouldn't be here fucking <laughs> <with Ebola. laughs> I mean, like i think that would have wiped no, it's out it's really right? hard to transfer ebola yeah it's anally mm, if there was ever an empire yeah for real yeah you're right flesh-eating butt virus yeah <laughs> Oh uh, well. Anyway, as Rome's power waned through all of this, its ability to protect its citizens. Oh, diminished. I actually I heard a, a good joke the other day. Oh, do it. It's like um, Greeks invented threesomes, Romans involved women. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, they couldn't really protect their citizens, especially on the further reaches of the empire. In response, wealthy landowners began to fortify their estates and offer protection to the surrounding community in exchange for labor. Or share of the produce that was made on the estate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is, in effect, kind of borrowed from the Roman practice of patronage, which yeah. they invented, um, where wealthy landowners would protect lesser citizens in return for services. That's even in, within the city and things like that. Uh, that's basically this is the precursor to the feudal system. So this informal system laid the groundwork for feudal relationships. And it was just basically people being like, "Can someone help me not get raped?" And they're like, "We got walls. Yeah, we got walls and stuff. We we." And we kind of talked about this too, like, you know, people for their service and things like that and generals and shit, they'd get a fucking, or they have to fortify shit out there. So someone's put in position of power mm-hmm. in a tower or a castle or something out on the outskirts. They're, they've got some walled off lands. Right. Shit's falling apart. They're like, I'm kind of just like here now. So And, and like, look, like these little uh, estates that the rich people had or whatever, like they're obviously not going to stop like a Hunnic army or a Gothic army. Not like but the entire thing. Yeah. What they will do is be too much trouble for raid parties breaking off and bandits and anything like that. Uh, that that just get to thrive in the chaos. Yeah, exactly. The the offshoots of the bigger fights. Yeah. 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 Um, like if the whole army comes in, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if they really want to fuck you up, they will, but for the just kind of marauding assholes, you can fend right. them off a lot better. Which, I mean, these armies lived off the land. Yeah. So. Well, speaking of the fall, again, the final blow to the Western Roman Empire came in the 5th century when a series of invasions and culminating in the sack of Rome by the Visigoths in 410 and the Vandals in 455 pretty much shattered the illusion of Roman invincibility. Uh, the deposition of Romulus Augustulus in 476 by the Germanic chieftain Odacer is... Uh, Odacer? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. It's traditionally marked as the end of the Western Roman Empire. It is funny that the last Western Roman Emperor was named Romulus Ag- Romulus Augustus. Augustus. Which is Romulus, founder of Rome, Augustus, the first emperor. Yeah. Pretty, uh... Really bookended pretty it well, yeah. Poetic. Yeah. It's the Titanic of emperor names, <laughs> really. Uh, the power vacuum left in Europe, uh, left all of the structure of Europe at that time fragmented with numerous tribal kingdoms vying for dominance at that time. All in all, the decline of the Roman Empire didn't happen overnight, though. It was a gradual process, exacerbated by the economic turmoil. Well, I was told it wasn't built overnight. It wasn't torn down overnight, either. But it definitely got a lot of gasoline poured on it in the last few hundred years of it. It's one of my like low-key favorite 30 Rock lines. Jack is like in Congress, and he's like, Gentlemen, Rome wasn't built in a day. And someone's just like, well, that's one theory. <laughs> I can 
see Matt Gates saying that. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Um, so all of this like change in power vacuum led to a shift in the way the land was managed and protected. This is where feudalism just comes perfectly in. It's like perfect. There you go. It's already happening in a way. But uh, as central authority disintegrated, lords and landowners turned into micro kings and became de facto rulers of their micro kingdoms, offering protection to the peasantry. At its core, feudalism wasn't much different from what they were already operating on before, though. So it was kind of perfect. Um, they were still second class citizens before that. Yeah, no, totally. They were the plebs. Yeah, they were. Yeah. It was just like, it got a lot more intimate. I would say, <laughs> like, it got way more like localized. You're, yeah, you're more not local. even a pleb. You're like, yeah. you're mine now, slave local. It's kind of like, you're not a slave, but like, if you stop working, we'll fucking kill you. Yeah, like, well, yeah. that's the thing. So, it's it is just really funny. So they got they ran in behind the walls, and you know the lord or the the pa- the patron or whatever had armed people to man the walls, and then once things calmed down, they were like, okay, few, we're leaving, and then those armed guys that were looking out. Turn around and look back in, and we're like, nah. "You staying? Yeah, man, it's a two-way so- wall. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, armed in, armed out. Yeah, you're not only trapped. You're <laughs> you were once saved. Now you're trapped here, right? Um, well, sometimes in order to elevate, you have to look within. Yes, self-reflection is important, mm-hmm. and I always like to look in when I have a bunch of people helping me, mm-hmm. and I'm like, "Hmm, let me look inside." And see how I can perpetuate this so I don't have to do anything. That's the best way to go about it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. That's that's right. So one of the most significant aspects of feudalism, um, that kind of the more intimate part, as I was saying, was the concept of fealty. So uh, the development of oaths of loyalty and service from a vassal to his lord really started to pick up steam here. Uh, the oath was often sealed in a ceremonial act of homage where the vassal would kneel before the Lord and place his hands between those of the Lord as a sign of submission and fidelity to oh. his Lord. It's like it's like a promise ring you give to your servant. Yeah. Or your servant gives to you. I don't really... Like, I promise I'll always work your lands, bro. You're just subbing for the Lord. You are. Like, I, at a certain point, this is, I guess, like... It's essentially indentured servitude. It's not quite slavery. They would be indentured disgusted servitude. by the current job landscape. <laughs> job hopping disgusting jake, jake, my time, yeah. no you would be uh, I, <laughs> jake would be dead immediately oh for sure what is it uh what's the word not a pogrom no oh. no we're not going there <laughs> we're not going to pogroms quite yet we won't get into that in this episode at all maybe one day uh what is the word for when people run away not traitor but they're abandoning they're running away deserter oh deserter, You're, yeah, yeah. yeah everyone would be killed as a deserter right yeah. um but yeah you're the bread maker, and you deserted our the little baker. town. <laughs> Who's going to slice the loaves? The baker's left us. <laughs> the ceremony of fealty underscored the personal bond at the heart of the feudal relationship, transcending more than mere economic transactions. This was pledging your life to the guy whose house you lived at. So uh, another important period that kind of bolstered feudalism was the migration period. Uh, which was a time of significant upheaval in Europe. That occurred pretty much right after the fall and during the fall, really. From, so from about 480 to 880. This is when feudalism just is like... Mm, yeah, that's in its tight. Yeah. Yeah. So during this era, uh, various Germanic tribes, including the Goths, Vandals, and Franks, moved across the continent, often clashing with Roman forces and other forces that were vying for power after the fall. And they would just start settling into Roman territories, too. It had to like, suck yeah. if you had to work for a low-level guy yeah like i don't respect you bottom tier lord yeah just fuck i got count jim like i'm gonna be (laughs) essentially an indentured servant but i gotta work for somebody that has merit you gotta feel like you're you're yeah you're part of a a winner yeah i gotta imagine if it's like game of thrones right it's like you're not like the blacksmith at winterfell you're like you're like fucking what what's the one the dread fort like, you're not even the main dude. You're, you're, you're like some if guy. You're, if, like, you're if, like, if, like, if like Walder Frey is your lord, <laughs> yeah, you're just like, you're just like you got a bridge, uh, I guess. Gross. Like, yeah. oh, this guy fucks everything, and it's all young. Um, but yeah, as these different tribes settled, they established their own kingdoms in the ruins of the empire, and they also liked the way that shit feudalism worked. They were like, oh, so if we this take this, great. Sh- hey, instead of uh, killing all of you. We're just going to settle up here, and you keep working. <laughs> and you swear to us now. And that system seemed to work. Peasants were like, hey, 
you got it. Don't rape and kill us. Yeah. Or well, less. Do it less. Do it less. Yeah. Maybe less of us. That would be cool. We'll We're keep We're useful working. to you now, so you might not. Yeah. Maybe. Me, but no maybe. promises. No promises. Yeah, no promise. I mean, like, Certainly. we would really, it'd be chill if you didn't, because that's yeah. kind of how it went with the last guy. Because I, I promised you to work for you, and it would be cool if you promised me to not um, <laughs> murder me and rape my family. I, I don't know if you're aware of how this agreement worked, but before, yeah. before, we didn't get raped and murdered because we were working for this guy. <laughs> and you killed him. Good job. Great. Kudos. Awesome. Awesome work. A you're, plus, no yeah, notes. You're great. Um, but if we could keep that agreement, that would be really swell. But yeah, the leaders of these tribes became new aristocracy, new kings, new lords, whatever you want to call them. And they granted land to their warriors in return for military service. So they kind of just continued the practice. And that evolved into the formal system of vassalage and fiefdoms in the feudal era. So you started getting more people like once they set up micro kingdoms, they would expand, set up more territories. And this is how you start getting into like the hierarchy of monarchy. Basically. Start to build nations. Yeah, you're, you're building nations slightly. Um, also, in the power vacuum, an interesting thing, the church was like, we're still here. Yeah. We're still here. Forget we're not going about fucking us. anywhere. Uh, the church itself became basically a feudal lord as an institution. No, not a. The, the feudal lord. The pope was goaded. Yeah. I mean, definitely after the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Yeah. I mean... Uh, kind of during i like I, I don't really know the specifics of like how the church I mean, the, was operating the, like as it was falling the pope at the time what came out from rome and met attila the hun and was like god wants you to leave and apparently allegedly uh saint peter appeared over the pope's shoulder and that scared attila the hun and he left that makes sense that, that's canon yeah. Uh, I think so because he's he's a saint because of it. Let me look it up. Well, saint. Peter's uh, a rock. He's like Geo dude. Yeah, he has no legs. Yeah, he's just a head and arms <laughs> and made out of rocks. Okay. I'd be I'd be terrified. Um, Leo the Great is the Pope. I will I will look this up. But yeah, uh, the spread of Christianity through um, basically, oh, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead a little bit. The system of feudalism was bolstered by the spread of Christianity, which played a crucial role in unifying the different tribes and kingdoms of Europe under a common faith. That's why the church was able to do it so well um, because Christianity and the spread of it was really just full steam ahead at this point, especially when things are falling apart. It's like, they're like, Oh, oh, guess what? Come to daddy. Come to God. You (laughs) got you. I'm a Catholic. Yeah. So they held vast tracts of land across Europe. Uh, Monasteries and bishops wielded a lot of power, especially locally, often acting as intermediaries between the peasantry and the nobility. So they were getting in between, and as we know from so many episodes, if you're an intermediary for anybody, right. you get to control a lot more than you probably should. But maybe it is what you deserve because you're the one doing the talking. Who knows? But yeah, between the fall of the Western Roman Empire and the rise of Charlemagne, Europe underwent significant transformations. So there's uh, the Merovingian, Merovingian dynasty, uh, which ruled over the Franks. Uh, they saw the fragmentation of power as territories were divided among heirs so they started really doing like once they started spreading they were like hey i got these kids yeah i'm gonna set them up in all these different power states kind of get them established so that really entrenched the feudal system as something that could be um what's the word like nepotistic but uh based on hereditary yeah lineage yeah. basically so like that started that's where you start seeing like the development of royalty through uh being passed down through a line but more so than even like the Roman emperors. Oh, a lot yeah, of them yeah. were a lot of them were sons, but a lot of them weren't, or they were like quote adopted sons. But like with when where you get straight up like son or bust, it's kind of European monarchy. Yeah, that's where you start to at see least in it. Europe. Uh, it it moves from we gotta have some sort of merit with these people we're giving things to to eh, right. that's my kid. Yeah, yeah. Give yeah, it, it goes to my kid. Yeah. Fuck you. So it's against this backdrop that Charlemagne emerged, uh uniting most of Western Europe under his rule. Uh, Charlemagne's reign, which is from 768 to 814, marked the like peak of feudalism being the hyper it. like it. Allegedly, yeah. if he actually existed. If he actually existed, we don't know for sure. He could be all could have been up. part of that uh, Roman Catholic calendar they made up. Just made up a bunch of stuff. I feel like they could have made up cooler people. Like 297 years or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he uh, he implemented a more structured system of governance. So he divided his empire into counties. And uh, 
marches overseen by, so he had counties overseen by counts, and I guess a term called margraves is something that he had as well, which, you know, count, margrave, lord, whatever. Uh, those were all appointed by him. This system ensured loyalty to him while allowing for efficient local governance. Uh, Charlemagne's efforts to promote education, culture, and Christian unity further solidified the feudal system, embedding it within the social and political fabric of Europe. So he just bought all in. He was full sail. He's like, I got to set up. At, like He kind of looked back at what happened with the Roman Empire, where it was like, you know, all these people were putting them out far away. Right. It's falling apart. They're going to vie for power. Like, I got to just, like, hook these guys up, really pamper them, mm-hmm. let them know that they're my boys. Let them have, and let them do their own thing. Let them do their own thing. Because really all I need them for is a little bit of tax money and if I ever need an army. Exactly. And that's a really important part, too, the idea of an army and the way that changes mm-hmm. kind of is the downfall of feudalism in a weird way, too. What, professional armies? Uh, standing armies. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so his reign saw not only the expansion of his empire, but also significant cultural and administrative reforms that would strengthen the feudal system at the time. Uh, he included reforms such as the standardization of weights and measures, which was really important for economics. Like he kind of standardized economic systems of trade yeah. through that. I mean, that's huge. Like the fact that it wasn't what you go over to another town and you're like, Oh, it's great. I got, <laughs> I got four clink clacks. And yeah. Polywop. Then you go to another town <laughs> like, like, Oh, he might, it's only two click clacks here. And, that we point. don't even call them click clacks. Yeah. We call them fringlings. You know, like it's just it. It's bananas. No one's knowing what they're saying to each other. They have to do all these conversions. So standardizing that shit really allowed the economy to boom more and the empire to grow. Uh, he also brought back the revival of Latin learning. So he was trying to kind of hark back to that like Roman Empire stuff. Right. Um, he also introduced the Carolingian minuscule script, which improved literacy and record keeping. Um, these reforms facilitated better management of estates. And the codification of feudal obligations, making the system more like entrenched and systematic again. So the more literate people were, the more they realized what they were. Well, you know what this really tells me, and it's so I I think it's so funny that they're always shit on. They're like an HOA or something. Like you, you're, not, you, you're it's, they're so easy to shit on that you forget that there's like po- a lot of positives to it. But essentially, what made this empire, or what, yeah, I guess empire really secure. Yeah and competent and it made people where how people's lives got better and so on and so forth bureaucracy it worked bureaucracy you want to know why the roman empire was able to withstand everything all its civil wars and all these invasions and even thrive two reasons one the economy and two which kind of plays into one and is also its own thing the bureaucracy it's interesting it was well run it's interesting you say that just because like it's not even that like bureaucracy bad whatever like uh, oh it's it, it comes down to the fact that people just want to know what to do it's like that's a playbook bureaucracy is a playbook more or less on how yeah. to how to govern right yeah. and it's like oh like obviously you can get bloated and you can get into like triplicate forms and shit like that yeah but, any, too much of anything is bad but giving just random dudes that may otherwise not know what to do at any given moment like a kind of a playbook and a code yeah, allows them to operate more efficiently because they don't have to think as hard. Yeah, so like I'm not saying plebes were stupid, but well, it's some people in power were fucking nah, stupid. No, they just got a call script, right? Yeah, they're working out a center. I'm just saying, man. Hello, sir. How was your day? Oh, I'm very happy or sad to hear that. <laughs> just go by the playbook. Don't go off script. Don't go off script because at the end of the day, like the script worked in Boiler Room. It wasn't the script's fault. It was that they were doing illegal shit with it, but the script was not at fault. In Boiler Room. Mm-mm. You ever see Boiler Room? No, but I've worked in the call center, so. Yeah, I mean, so you know the deal. Reco! Anyway, feudalism reached its peak. You ever, I mean, cold calling is the worst. Yes, it's terrible. It's easily the Horrible. Worst. I wouldn't I wish that, uh, that job on anyone. Yeah. Uh, all of us here have done it. That's why we're so great at talking. I'm not that great at talking. No, I'm, I'm honestly. That I've wasn't that good at cold calling. Uh, kind of. It's Cold calling sucks. Warm calling's fine. I'll, you get an inbound lead. Nice. At least this guy wants to talk to me, kind of. Set up that pipeline. Yeah, dude. Go into the funnel. Anyway, feudalism reached its peak in the 11th and 12th centuries, but began to show signs of strain as populations grew. Trade started to revive, and cities expanded. And trade revitalization is an interesting point. Um, It's not that trade went away or anything like that. It's just when you're in a 400-year period of chaos. Yeah. Like, 
trade gets a little hard. People are stealing. There's marauding bandits. Well, when the economy becomes more dynamic, the primary, maybe like only economic pillar becomes less important. The other thing that's interesting to me with feudalism is it is really a non-urban system. Oh, yeah. It so, works for and, fields. Yeah, yeah. And, and cities were like, I mean, Rome at its peak had over a million people in it. And after its, quote, fall, it had like 50,000 people living there. I mean, it was a fucking ghost town. Yeah, everyone was spread pretty thin. Yeah. So feudalism makes sense. But once power starts reconcentrating. Once, I mean, but yeah, yeah. And Rome was a pretty urban uh, empire. I mean, it had obviously like you know Constantinople was huge, Rome, other cities. But uh, yeah, once the city, once people start wanting to live in cities again, once cities start thriving again, and then the economy becomes more diversified. Yeah, yeah, totally. Actually, one thing I just remembered, I forgot to write it down. But I was reading some stuff about like just day to day lives of people that were uh, living as serfs or fiefs. Or oh whatever. yeah, they had better lives than us because they only worked. <laughs> Four hours a day or something, man. We've, we've talked about this. I know this we have. Not, Three day still, weekends, dude. I still see that fucking meme every once in a while, and it drives me insane. It's like, so when you're not working for your lord, uh, you have uh, special projects, which are, dig this hole here. You're, oh, you're not like, farming They right got now? more vacation days. Like, No, they didn't. Their vacation day was their day off from the field work they did to dig trenches and do special yeah, projects. It's like, okay, all right. Here's a great way to put that. I'm sorry they were given purpose. <laughs> Imagine... You know how you like you bet like you know how like a random person spends their weekend they'll do like the Spartan race or whatever. Yeah. Imagine that that's how you spend your free time, but you don't have a choice. That you were told to You're do. You're doing it. this the Spartan race is necessary for you to survive. You know, it's like uh, covered in mud and exhausted. I, I think the perfect thing is like, you remember, you know, sometimes we do things outside of work for work where it's like, oh, we got to film an exec board or something right. like that. Or we got to like go to this party and show face at it or something. We have to record softcore history. Mm-hmm. It, right. Uh, it would be like if every single day they're like, all right, now you got to go record for eight hours. Yeah. Like, oh, thanks. I guess that's why people hated that. But I was reading about like the day to day. And I love how petty people always have been. Oh, yeah. So, like, typically what the, the servants or serfs or whatever you want to call them, they'd pay their, like, tribute and grain. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are, like, whatever crop they could, like, dry and give off. That, But typically it was grain. Uh, one guy wasn't really thrilled about, like, the whole situation with what was going on or, like, the way they were being treated. So he paid his tribute that month in live chickens, which was a fuck ton of live chickens. Like, it was a lot of live chickens. Yeah. Like, uh, I think it was at least 100. Nice. So he has, like, this cart full of chickens. He's just... And he rolls up to the front of the, wherever this guy lives. There's these beautiful, like, immaculate gardens. Right. He just throws the thing throws the thing down and lets the chickens go. He's like, you're paid. And they just tear apart his garden. Fuck yeah. I didn't... I can't imagine that ended well for him. He's probably, he probably died. He probably died. But I lo- it's kind of like the, when you show up to the tow truck place and you pay him pennies. Yeah. It's like $300 in pennies. Here you go. And they try to say you can't pay that way. Then know, they right. smash out your windshield. And they're like, all right, here you go. Get it out with slash tires, bro. Oh, it came like this. Sorry. Yeah. Pettiness is a two-way street. Because <laughs> I'm sure a lord probably just killed that guy out of pettiness, too. But yeah, uh, the growth of trade and commerce in the late medieval period led to the rise of a wealthy merchant class whose power was not based on land, but on capital. So that's obviously a big challenge to the feudal system. This shift diminished the economic basis of feudalism as money became a more important source of power than land. And that's pretty significant for where we are now, I would say. Like, land is still obviously very important, and it was very important. It still is, but you didn't have to well, have it. I mean, look at it this way, right? Like, you and me both own houses, mm-hmm. which means we have a certain amount of, like, asset. You can borrow wealth. against, too. Yeah, that you can borrow against it, but... That just because you have land don't mean you're liquid. No, it does not. And I think for the first time, yeah. But just because you don't have land doesn't mean you are liquid. <laughs> That's a good point. Hmm. Touche, <laughs> touche. Uh, but yeah, no. Like for the first time in hundreds of years, it was like, oh, you don't need land to be right. set. And that's a huge paradigm shift for the way people operate. Uh, additionally, our old friend, the Black Death. Led to labor shortages. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, it definitely does, it, especially when people are working in close quarters. Yeah. Oh, guess what? Your little micro kingdom with your little castle walls, everyone's fucking dead. Oh, dude, that means you can ask for more. 
Get from? those wages up. <laughs> yeah, hey, man, we're paying good over it's here. the market, baby. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work that way just because people started fleeing more and more to cities for easier lives. Um, again, back to the peasant thing. If living the peasant life was so fucking sick, cities wouldn't have become a thing. <laughs> yeah, no like, joke. Cities wouldn't have exploded. No one would have been like, oh, you know what? going to leave the farm for this shithole. Yeah, like, well, I want to work more hours. <laughs> they're like, you know, I like digging ditches. I'm sure there were people like that. But yeah. The honorable work. Cities would not have exploded if that was good, like the best work out there. Right. Um, get a nice tan, get jacked. But speaking to Dan's point, surviving peasants started realizing their value and did start demanding higher wages. So that put a strain on some of the minor. Uh, what do you want to call it? like the the manor system mm -hmm. if you will um or they left to seek better opportunities in towns right so this led to the erosion of the serf lord relationship that was pretty sent that was integral to the feudal economy the other thing that really kind of they could have had it going for a lot longer but uh monarchs started wanting to centralized authority a lot more yeah yeah they were kind of tired of uh, well i mean you know and there was a certain like there's a certain amount of like they, they got challenges from these people yeah you know what i mean like it wasn't like they were everyone was just like okay you're up there and i'm third like these are all arrogant motherfuckers running their own fiefdoms yeah they're all they all like power they're not sad even the kings aren't satisfied with it if they were no, if they, they were, they wouldn't fight wars to get more land and shit. Yeah. I mean, those coffers run dry eventually. Yeah. You like got to expand. Just, it's yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you're constantly, the centralization of authority shuts down challengers to the throne. Exactly. So that consolidation of power in the hands of the monarch, monarchs uh, really weakened the feudal system too because you're eliminating other outside, of, you're bringing everything under one umbrella again, which allows for empires to kind of fill in more mm -hmm. too. Um Another big thing, of course, is the Renaissance, right? So that had an emphasis on humanism and individualism, which further kind of fucked things up because, uh, you know, <laughs> they're starting to change the way laws are thought about in general and people. what people are, yeah. not just workers. Yeah. They're like individuals with thoughts and feelings and things like that, which a lot of people would argue is where it all went wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, there's one man to blame, and it's Da Vinci. Uh, yeah, him or maybe Voltaire. Is he honestly one of the more impressive men to ever walk the planet? Da Vinci? Yeah. Does he not get enough of like flowers? I think he gets plenty of flowers. I don't think so. I actually don't think he gets enough because he never, he was not like a conqueror. And also. Oh, I see what you mean. But he, he like, created so many things. But they were like, and so imagine if like. Imagine if, like, Thomas Edison invented all the stuff he invented, but no one ever used it. That's Da Vinci. You know what I mean? He had a glider. I know, but I no mean, one ever used it. He was too far ahead of his time. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Da Vinci's, like, rocking up with, like, a fucking Zeppelin, and people are like, what the fuck is that? That's dumb as shit. Da bro. Vinci's trying to get to the fucking moon. <laughs> They're like, what? Moon? They're like, you're so stupid. What, what do you want up there? It's just cheese. Yeah. Shut up. But, uh, yeah, so another big thing, I, I'm sure you guys agree with this, but the Protestant Reformation kind of fucked shit up, too, as it did with everything. I always, you don't have to tell me twice. Uh, which, I'm sure you can guess, challenged the Catholic Church's authority, which, which creates problems. And by extension, since the Catholic Church is such a large feudal power, challenges the idea of a feudal system in conjunction with yeah. the Renaissance that's going on. So by the 17th century, the, develop, the development of all of these things is really coming to a peak. And then you're also seeing a large scale focus on developing standing armies. Yeah. And that makes the military service provided by serfs way less essential. You're having trained standing armies that are existing for the sole purpose of conquering and fighting. So these plebes that just fucking rake your yard. Not as useful, especially when nah. warfare gets more specialized with firearms and stuff like that. Well, I don't know if it made it more specialized, but it's the type of thing where, like, it's it's hard to standardize firearms if you're just like calling a levy, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you need if you like you need to like yeah, just, it needed to be. I think firearms really necessitated a re-standardization of militaries because obviously there was standardization to like the roman army 
uh, for a long time and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, it feels like that once ri- not rifles, muskets and cannons came about, they were like, all right, we need to we need a trained, cohesive force. We can't just call up like farmers are useful in some contexts, like Minutemen. Yeah, right? sure. in the American Revolution, but like you can't actually make a force out of those people. It's it's a lot harder to cobble together a bunch of random pieces. Like it, it's like yeah, they're, they're very good at like taking a dive, such as the Boston Massacre. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like you're given like a hundred random Legos or a hundred Lego specifically to make a tank. Like what's you know mm-hmm. you're gonna make like something that looks kind of like a tank, or you can make something that's specifically supposed to be a tank, right? Like. If you're cobbling together a bunch of farmers, you can make what looks like an army, but it's not going to operate the way you want it to, and it's going to have a lot of fucking problems. Yeah. So the development of this, like... Can I go back to Dan's point real quick? Yeah, That sure. Crispus Attucks was a crisis actor? <laughs> he was. I mean, there's a reason John Adams got the British off. Yeah. Never thought about it like that. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. Ju- it was a justified police shooting. You can call me a bootlicker. I don't care. Yeah, bootlicker. Loyalist. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how many people at the height... Uh, of the American Revolution supported the American Revolution in the colonies. Probably not that many. It was like twenty five percent, forty five percent. That's that's more than I would have thought. Yeah. Honestly, that's more than I would have thought. But they didn't even break fifty. Yeah, of course they didn't. So the approval rating of the American Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> that's why approval ratings are bullshit. <laughs> in the time, <laughs> it doesn't matter what the rate. Forty five percent. All I'm saying, and is it was everyone in Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it polled really well in Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah, they were like, man, fuck them. But no, it's that's what polls never matter. Like, also, who's pulling it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, so, what do you think? <laughs> it's like, get the fuck out of here. Uh, but yeah, so these standing armies, obviously, they give way to the necessity for a nation state and the formation of state-led governments or states led by a centralized monarchical figure. And this, this, from some dickheads who couldn't stop fighting each other in Rome, yeah, leads to... The fall and power vacuum that leads to these people living in these little castles, which leads to higher up people trying to consolidate them, which leads to the current people we still have today that are in existing monarchs, like monarchies. Like there's not a lot of them. It's 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 more than you think. It's more than you think. A lot of them are completely figureheads. Oh, totally. But like, I don't. There's there's still a king of Spain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's still a king of uh, the Netherlands. There's a Netherland royalty. No, not Netherlands. Um, Denmark. Yeah. Denmark. Netherlands has been a republic for a while. Yeah. Um, I think all the Scandinavian countries have gotten rid of their... I pretty Check sure. it out, Rob. Most countries are just oligarchies, bro. Yeah, man. I mean... No, that's true, though. I do believe that. Um, I, like, the United States is an oligarchy, in my opinion. Every The world is... <laughs> yeah. I mean, those... Yeah, no. Power goes somewhere. Like, what do you... Fuck? It's going to happen. Like... The the last place it's gonna the last place power will be, is the fucking masses. I will no, say dude. That. Sweden has a king. Do they? King Carl Gustav. Was it Finland that doesn't have? Maybe. Yeah, because of the Russia. Oh, because Finland had that hot chick. Um, the prime minister. They had a PM. Yeah. I mean, but that doesn't mean they don't have a king. Yeah. yeah. But was that Finland or Nor- Norway? Dude, Victoria, Crown Princess of Sweden. Let me look her up real quick. Rob's gonna see if she's hot. He's gonna just kind of scroll through her Instagram real quick. But yeah, the he's gonna get lost in the sauce. The seventeenth century is where you start to see the, good enough, good the, enough to marry. Certainly, the fall of like traditional feudalist monarchy into just classical, like what we think of as monarchy now, over a larger swath of like a country. Yeah, um, we kind of when we picture monarchy, we think like King George. Yeah, we think of a king of an entire country. A lot yeah. of Georges. In that era. There's four straight Georges, I think. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Well, ours was George the Third against the American Revolution. I know. We covered our bases, though. It was like, fuck George. Could have been all, any fuck of George. them. Fuck George. Could have been any of them. Vote George. Vote George. Fuck George. All that. I think it was four Georges and a William. I think there was a William. That sound there, right? Yeah. Sounds like a rom-com. Four Georges and a William. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But despite its decline, feudalism left quite the mark on modern society it still does uh one of the most visible legacies is in the legal system especially of land ownership particularly in england where feudal law influenced common law uh the concept of a fee uh for land held in exchange for service can still be seen in some legal systems today like holdovers and stuff like that too when Uh, did they just give the death penalty to any crime what when did they give like the feudal system they would just kill you for nothing 
I mean, that that predates the feudal system. Okay. Yeah, but I but mean, yeah, you're talking like he he stole a chicken, hang him. Yeah, and then the the main dude of the house or the man man or got his head like, off. Yep, yeah, whatever. Fuck. But I mean, that's like the old west too, right? You steal a horse, they fucking hang you. Can you imagine that? You steal a car and you just like ex- some early that comes from England though. By a sheriff. that was like highway men and yeah, a lot of criminals in England. I think they passed some law in like the 1750s just to kind of curb it where not only did they kill you for everything but they also like made sure you didn't get into heaven they wouldn't bury you they would hang you in the public god there's a really great anecdote about uh draconian law because like people was so draconian like the guy draco i believe it was his name (laughs) it's actually dracon 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 dracony draken draken uh, th- whoever that's named after, people actually loved that guy. Like, is it like how everyone thinks, like, you know, you call something Machiavellian, but it's actually he was like being facetious the whole time? He was kind of playing both sides of that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like, he his whole thing was like, well, like, I <laughs> he's like, honestly, death for death makes sense to me, but. I can't think of anything worse than death to sentence people for it because, like, stealing, I think, is worse than killing someone. Right. That was the whole reason they had that law passed in 1751, I think, in England. Um, they There was so much crime because it wasn't a deterrent to just kill them. Yeah. But they're like, you know what? We're going to, like, tax your family. Yeah. We're going to make sure you don't get into the afterlife. You got to do a lot. It's just yeah. uh, De Niro and The Untouchables. I want him dead. I want his family dead. I want him dead. Um, but yeah, the practice of swearing an oath of allegiance pretty much comes from feudalism for the most part, like in a lot of our legal system stuff still. For instance, we swear in senators, you know, uh, House of Commons, they get sworn in. Yeah. Right? It's still a holdover from that time period. Um, you know, in Japan, the influence of the samurai code. And completely different. Like feudalism wasn't just a European thing either, right? It's like, called feudal Japan yeah, for a reason, right? Exactly. Like it I was a system that. Shogun. I mean, feudalism to me is like a pyramid, right? Mm-hmm. It's literally like it is like a a logical, high, like social pyramid. Mm-hmm. And you know, what's the easiest way to build a building? Do it like a pyramid. What's the easiest way to build a society? I guess just do it like a fucking pyramid. Well, I mean, it's like a, one of those things is like power structures find the, find their way. Like it's always path of least resistance, right? It's like water. Yeah, it's it, power structures exist because that's the way they're going. Like, shout out to uh, my Portuguese brethren that made it to Japan first. Yeah, shout out to them. They must have loved that. Changed the culture. You think that's why you like Asian chicks so much? It could be. It's just <laughs> you have some ancestor <laughs> far who like long. rolled up to Japan and was like, "Dear God, oh my like, this is it. God, this is the spot." It's yeah. Like, Died and gone to heaven. I have never had an erection like this in my life. Months long. Guys leaking blood just from his dick. That makes sense. That sure track's good, though. I recommend watching we'll it. Have to, I'll have to watch that. But yeah, uh, similarly, the European tradition of noble titles and heraldry, heraldry, though largely ceremonial, still continues to fascinate and influence social hierarchies today, so we still have holdovers from that shit, too. I mean, like... Things don't just go away forever, like and disappear. We have a lot of holdovers from feudal. I mean, shit. The concept of landlord and tenant is a feudal holdover. Landlord, landlord. That's where it comes from. They are the lord of that land. That's funny. It's a funny title. Yeah, and people still pay rent like dickheads. I'm sure someone's trying to pay with chickens still to this day. Well, landlords are evil. No, I don't think so. I don't either. It's like if <laughs> that's you just own- a common like. I think it is. What are they supposed to do, man? I think there are like predatory ways to be a landlord, but But it is funny because it's like, all right, okay, okay, all right. You don't want, especially when funny when they go after small landlords because every great landlord I've had was just some guy renting a place. Yeah, it's never a fucking organization like Graystar or no shit. It's like so. All right, you don't want a small landlord. You're mad at that guy because he owns the property that you live in. So what do you want to replace it with? Because there's only two options if it's not a small landlord. It's a fucking corporation. Or the state. <laughs> yeah. So you want to live in fucking government housing, or <laughs> you want to live in a corporate ho- in a corporate apartment? Because I've done that too. They don't give a fuck about you. No, they <laughs> they're like move then. Yeah, they're like move. They we'll call fill it in for everything. more money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like we'll just rat. Ra- they you've make it waiting. shittier and shittier. You've been waiting we'll for you to we'll move. We'll find a way to <laughs> yeah. write off your empty apartment. Yeah, no, for real. Like we were just talking about this today. They'll we look- find a way to write off you. 
Yeah, we were looking at like apart. All the apartments are built so close to the interstate. Have you noticed this? Like when you're just going up and down I-35, they're like so fucking close to the edge. Yeah. Right. I was thinking like, obviously that's for marketing when you're driving into a town. Like so people see it. It's like, oh, there's that. Yeah. They see it when they're going into a city center. But do you think some of that's for like eminent domain where they're like, we can take a huge write off if the government expands this road? Wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Like, because think about how much. That's the backup plan. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the, oh, and if the government wants to stretch this highway. And by the way, they, I feel like if you are, uh, again, like a giant, a giant corporation, like the major landlord, like Gracer and stuff are, unlike, say, our company who's getting eminent domain, who is a small business, um, for a big ass corporation like that. It's the city who is at a disadvantage because they can throw serious lawyer money Mm -hmm. into it. And the the city has more uh, incentive to settle on a price that they name. And pay more, yeah. And Whereas against a smaller landowner like the people we work for, the city has more legal muscle and more legal funding. Mm -hmm. And every complex... In the city is owned by the same company. Absolutely, like there's no you can't escape them. I mean, fuck, dude, look at tech. But anyway, yeah, fuck that old guy that owns the fucking house. You, yeah, live. the one dude, the oh, the guy yeah. owns three houses and See, fucking what a Charleston, piece of shit, right? Yeah, oh, he bought a couple rental properties. Sanders, so who no. owns three fucking houses, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he doesn't right. rent them out, so he's a good guy. He doesn't <laughs> let other people live in his houses, <laughs> yeah. so he's a good guy. Right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you fucking moron. Stop it. All right. But that's it for feudals, man. Thanks a lot, Romans, for fucking it up for everybody. But no, it would have happened regardless. It yeah, always that's just is how it goes. It's, yeah, but I think it is interesting how like the fall, of, like it's like one of those. It's not even a small domino, but like it's like you push that little domino over fall of Western Roman Empire. <laughs> like yeah. Kate Middleton's, we're worried where she is. Yeah, like that's, Kate Middleton's butt lift raises yeah, questions. Yeah, right, exactly. Like it's that's how we get there. That's how we get to the version of monarchy we're, we're familiar with today. It's just people are like. Okay, I guess I own this land and everyone in it now. Yeah, but Rome had elected officials. Yeah, and then they didn't exist. I know. That's, <laughs> so why are we thanking them for falling? We're not. It was okay. being facetious. Okay. It's like, thanks a lot, Rome. Uh, I mean, there were, depending on... Re- elections happen throughout human history. It just depends on the level of it. So, like, there were elected positions still within, f- you know, feudal society and sure. stuff like yeah. that. No, I mean, it's like, for your office bonus, do you want a pizza party or a bar tab? That's right. It's not just cash in your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, right. a bar tab. Bar tab, please. Bar tab, for sure. Always bar tab. But also, if it could just be cash, that'd be could cool, be It never is, but... All right, so uh, who's Hitler? Um, I'm sorry, what'd you learn today? What did I learn? Today? either. <laughs> um, Hitler today... Yeah. I gotta say, it's on Rome. Rome, Roman settler. Oh, it's the Roman landlords. It's the Roman. It's the so essentially imagine this: like all the rich guys you know in town, mm-hmm. they get killed by the Huns or whatever. So you got to go live. This is where it gets maybe I don't I'm totally speculating here, but you got to go out to the country and live on some rich redneck asshole huge property go live and in work candy for land. him. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, those guys. Those guys. Yeah. Fuck them. I would say also the Visigoths and the Vandals are also Hitler. They're fine. Yeah, uh, you know. They just do what they do. You either start out as Hitler or live long enough to become the hero. Those people became the French and the and the Spanish. I think the visit, true, yeah. Visit. The, I mean, the Gauls were the French. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were like in the Franks, obviously. And I'm, I can't remember which one settled in Spain. If it was the Visigoths or the Vandals. I think the Vandals were North Africa and the Visigoths were Spain. Maybe, maybe the Vandals were both. All, all great names. Yeah. Goths, Vandals. Weren't, weren't the Gauls kind of in Spain too? Maybe a little bit. Yeah, yeah they dipped their toe. I mean, that would make sense because they border yeah. France. Okay, cool. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thanks so much for listening. I guess I learned. Yeah, oh, yeah. What'd you learn? Um, just how feudalism came to be. Yeah. Congrats. Thanks for that, Jay. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks little, for that little hit. It's actually lesson. a history lesson. Like sometimes I like to talk about how things happened, and, like how we got Look, here. Look, it's always a more fun show when we actually learn something. Yeah. I didn't learn anything. I knew all this. Yeah, stuff I know. Already. You. Uh, yeah, why do we? Why do we even have you here to learn? And not to learn to correct us. So what he said was he didn't have fun. He had zero fun. He he chimed in a lot, though, which was helpful. He chimed in, too, but in a more fun way. Okay, I thought you were calling me out for, like, oh, way to talk up, Dan. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you didn't talk. I'm just saying, like, he was, like, you know, he he knows more than us on Rome, especially. I, I don't think. think so. I think he's just confident in what he says. You're probably right. We're just um, like, He we're- actually was totally wrong the other day about Pigeon Forge. 
That's true. It's it was in not Tennessee. In Georgia. I don't know. Tennessee, I yeah. doubted myself. I've been to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. <laughs> I've been in a cabin in Pigeon Forge right next to Dollywood. And he somehow convinced me that it's in Georgia. It's not because in Tennessee. He, because he quoted three-year Letterman. And we're like, oh, yeah, he's a Georgia guy. Check it out. You haven't been to Pigeon Forge, Dan. <laughs> Wait. Hear him out. Let I'm him, not going to hear you out. Let him cook. I've been. I'm just <laughs> telling you, cook. you haven't been to Pigeon Forge. I know for a fact you haven't been to Pigeon Forge. <laughs> Shit, Jake. I think I don't, I've never been to Pigeon Forge. <laughs> Dude, I, don't think, I think it's in Georgia, man. <laughs> it might be in Georgia. I think it's in God Georgia. Damn. Well, who knows where it is? I know you haven't been there. Yeah, Dan certainly has. If, if we can't even determine where it is, then I know that Dan can't have been there. Of course. Yeah. I mean, just uh, uh, you can't undo that That's logic. just A to B to B yeah. to C, you know? If all argue Dan's with, try to argue don't know where Pigeon Forge is, then Pigeon Forge is somewhere Dan hasn't been. Why do I do this job? I should be a fucking attorney. You, you should, should just be, follow the No, nah, man. No, nah, dude. Fucking just go up there and confidently be like, Think does tank. this man look like a murderer to you? He does not. He does not. He does not. <laughs> if you've never seen a murderer in real life, yeah. have you even seen a murderer? Then how do you know what a murderer looks like? How can you judge this man? Are we sure he's even real? He could be AI. I want to get that because I want to get my client back on the street raping and killing. <laughs> I mean, not doing that. The opposite. It's not my problem what he does before or, or, well, it is my problem what he did before he got to me. It is not my problem what he does after he leaves me. You would crush in New York right now. What do you mean? Just with all the immigrants. That they're what? just shipping up there. Why, why would I crush? <laughs> Where's this? What's A to B on the... Uh, uh, it's fair. No, the, it's, the, the no immig- man's right. <laughs> the immigrants that got off that just beat the shit out of the cops and just left. Oh, yeah. I could be their lawyer. I'll, I'll, their lawyer. I, I still, I mean, as terrible as it was, the Martha's Vineyard thing where it's like, ooh. That's pretty funny. They're like, yeah. What are they going to do there? Don't, don't be a yard sign liberal if you don't want that shit on your front fucking yard. Mm, fair. Um, yeah, that's it for today, guys. So hope you learned something. Yeah. Please, Please leave a review. Five stars. Please and thank you. Apple, uh, can you write a review? That would be really helpful. We'll read those next week. We have a bunch. Uh, um, if we can get up to 1,000, I can drink again, so that would be cool. 50 short? 46, yeah, like, I think, short? No, we're like 50 short. <sighs> Guys, you really? 950 on the it dot? It changes Stop all the making time. Dan so damn healthy. So, yeah. please, please and thank you. Five stars on Spotify, too, if you can. And uh, appreciate it. Yeah, well, that's it for me. For Dan or Jess from Rob Fox, I'm Jake Goldman. You just got sauce served. <laughs>